Tonight Show. Y'all are in for a treat. Here now with a scene from his one-man show, Career Suicide. Ladies and gentlemen, the very funny Chris Gethard. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, when, I, when I started seeing my shrink, uh, she says to me, she goes, hey, you don't drink booze anymore, huh? How come? Are you, uh, are you an alcoholic? And I was like, no, I, I, I would get out of control a little bit, but I never drank every day. I'm not an alcoholic. And, and she says to me, actually, it's a lot more about your relationship with alcohol. G give me an example. And I go, okay. Um, I remember one night when I was a student at Rutgers University, I was out drinking with this girl and I really wanted to impress her, so every time she has a pint, I have a pitcher. <laughs> I am just throwing it back, and really quickly, she's like, this isn't cool, man, I'm, I'm heading home. And I go home, too. Now, here's where I baffle myself, is I know I've had too much to drink. That just happened. It was embarrassing. Still, I get home, my roommates are drinking, I grab a bottle from one of them, crack it open, chug the whole thing, top to bottom, throw the empty bottle on the ground. Now, my roommates are drinking, Mad Dog 2020, which some of you have heard of. For anybody who's not familiar with Mad Dog 2020, congratulations. You've never been homeless. That's a good thing. It's good. I, I, I do not mean to be insensitive, but let's be honest. The target demographic of this product is the homeless community. We were drinking strawberry kiwi flavor. I drank the whole thing. My roommates are like, we can't believe you did that. I'm like, you can't? Give me another one. I chug another whole bottle of Mad Dog. That's when this night goes nuts. I'm opening windows and yelling at people out on the streets. I'm, I'm getting in my roommates' faces, trying to convince them to fight me. I'm rolling around on the floor. And in the middle of all this chaos, my roommate Phil comes home, and he does not size things up well. He says, uh, he goes, hey, bros, I'm going to a frat party. Anybody want to come? <laughs> And the rest of my roommates are like, Phil, no, 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 no. And I'm like, yeah, I'm coming to the frat party, Phil. And I'm just going to do me, man. I'm just going to do whatever I want, Phil. And if anybody has an issue with that, I'll let them know that you're responsible for bringing me. And right then, my roommate, Dan, grabs me and goes, Phil, run. And Phil runs. He sprints out the front door of our house. Dan's pinning my arms down. He's going, you got to chill out, man. Calm down. I'm like, fine. He helps me get to my room. I get undressed. He tucks me into bed. <laughs> nice roommate thing to do, right? I fall asleep. Should be the end of this story. <laughs> Except the next thing I know, I come to again, and I'm fully clothed, and I am running down the middle of a street in New Brunswick, New Jersey, and I am wearing a Batman mask. I don't know where I got one. I've never owned a Batman mask. I don't even like DC Comics, man, but I am wearing one and I am running, maybe from the person I took the Batman mask from. I black out again. I come to, I'm on the front porch of a house. I'm trying to open the door. There's a guy holding it closed from the other side going, no, seriously, Batman, you cannot come in here. <laughs> I black out again. I come to on top of a parked car. I'm jumping up and down. There are people surrounding the entire car going, Batman, <laughs> Batman. I black out. I come to, I'm back in my room, thank God, and I'm sitting on the edge of my bed, blinking through the Batman mask. And as I get my bearings, I realize that on the couch, in the corner of my room, there are two adult men who can only be described as sketchy. And <laughs> they're looking at me, and I'm looking at them. And, and finally, I say, y uh, you, you have to get out of my house. <laughs> and they look at each other. The one guy goes, wait, what? And I go, you have to go, you, you have to get out of my house. And the other guy goes, but what happens? And I realize I must be in the middle of telling these guys a story. <laughs> and they want to know how it ends. But I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So I stand up. I'm like, seriously, you got to go right now. You, you have to get out of my house. And right then, my shrink interrupts me and goes, uh, yeah, you're definitely an alcoholic. 
Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Okay. Now, thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing. Thank you so much for letting me do my comedy. Thank you for that. Does your, how does your therapist feel about you sharing the story that you shared in therapy and making he or she? She. How does she feel that she's a character in your show? How does she feel about that? She's not thrilled. She saw it on Saturday and, and she didn't, like afterwards I texted her and a few hours later, I was getting nervous. She finally wrote back. She's like, I, actually, I feel okay about it after the tequila shots I just took. Like, she's... <laughs> the show is called uh, Career Suicide. Yeah. Where does the title come from? Well, it's kind of about, you know, you just saw I'm doing comedy about alcoholism and depression and suicide stuff. And it's, uh -huh. I think it's very funny, but it's also very real. And, you know, kind of banking your career on the idea of suicide is in and of itself career suicide. So uh -huh. it's kind of like a... How are you feeling now? Because uh, it's, it's a rough time to be sad. I feel, I t it is. Uh, well, I will tell you, the past week, I've never, the ticket sales are, like, people are really in the mood for a depression-themed comedy show <laughs> right now. Very much so, yeah. Is it? Um, now, your family, your family features in this. Has there any reaction from your family? Thanksgiving's coming up. Are, are you, do you have to answer for the show you're doing with your loved ones? Yeah, a little bit. They saw it. My parents saw it, and uh, my mom was very touched. We had a very emotional conversation. And my dad, in very, like, Irish Catholic fashion, all he had to say, he just goes, funny show, bud. That was it. That's all he took away. <laughs> From That's my nice. show. Is that about... good? Is that, is that thumbs up? Yeah, he texted me some nice things the other, the, the day after, but like face to face, there was no world in which my, my father would be the first to admit, not an emotional man at all. Um, and uh, funny show, bud. That's the most tender he's ever been. Well, uh, you did, and I found this out today, you did, a, you did a live election night show. Yeah. I did one too. What was, what was yours? Mine was on public access TV for 12 straight hours. Oh. Mine was one hour. It just felt like 12 straight yeah. hours. So how, what did you do for 12 hours? Mostly it was just like we had a lot of, like, just talked about the results as they came in, and there was so much joy and positivity for the first 10 hours. And then that went away. Comedians came in, did bits, so many funny people around New York. And then the, la well, the last 10 minutes of mine was just me sitting with my coat and hat on waiting to leave. It was just like, <laughs> when is this Everyone done? Everyone left? The whole studio cleared out, and it was just me sitting in silence for 10 minutes, like, when do I get to go home and face the fact that democracy has fallen? What am I doing <laughs> on public access TV right now? Does democracy happen? Democracy it did happen. happened. That's true. Yeah. It, it's, it's just been tainted and corrupted, hopefully not permanently. <laughs> It's just, yeah. it's scary side has shown up, but that's okay. What can you do? Yeah. <sighs> even, even, even Batman has his dark days. That's true. <laughs> that is very true, yeah. Well, Chris, lovely to see you. You too. Thanks for, thanks for having me again. Nice to have you. <laughs> Career Suicide is now off Broadway at the Lynn Redgrave Theater. Chris Gethard, everybody. We'll be right back.